Good thing you saved me. I swear I could hear the sausage grinder call in my name. No problem. Saving pigs on vacation is what I was born to do. Yay, pigs on vacation. Hey everybody, Nostalgia Scott coming to you guys with part 6 of Spyro Into the Dragonfly. So I finally got here after about 20 minutes of trying to. His name was Homer, by the way. That was it, his name was Homer. All that for a guy named Homer. I fell through the platforms about half a dozen times. I also had this glitch where like you'll hover on top of the platform, and then you'll just eventually fall through. With like no animation, you'll just appear in the water. And I didn't talk to this pig. Good thing you saved me. I swear I could hear the sausage grinder call in my name. No problem. Saving pigs on vacation is what I was born to do. Yay, pigs on vacation. So I really want to know like, where a lot of these like humanoid animals came from. They weren't in the original Spyro game, so it's like really weird that in Spyro 2 they became such a big thing. Like, yeah, like, Alora and, and Hunter, and the Professor, and then eventually, like, characters like Blink, and Sergeant Bird, and, and Bentley the Yeti, and stuff like that. Like, I want to know why they just decided one day to be like, yeah, we'll add a bunch of animal characters. Like, I'm fine with it. I'm not complaining. It's just, I want to know, like, why that all became a thing, and why that's stuck in every single game instead of changing it up, you know? Also, why do enemies tend to only drop red gems? That still bugs me to this day. Like, all, all the big gems are just laying around, and there's a mini game over there. I'm pretty sure that's the Hunter one. Which, honestly, isn't too bad. Also, is this another cave? Yeah, it is. It's another cave. Bruh. Moment. Whoa. Remember when I said this game is buggy? Yeah, that was just a case of what I was dealing with when I was trying to do that uh, stupid challenge there. I'm getting Homer the Dragonfly. You know, it's kind of fitting that they chose Dragonflies, though, for uh, Dragon's Companion, because it kind of makes sense, because they have Dragon in their name, too. Yeah, i seen that coming. Also, the delay, like, when you get hit, is so long. Like, the recovery time is huge in this game. Sure, they don't hit you again. Like, other Spyro games like to cheese you with. Not pointing any fingers at, uh, at a hero's tail or anything like that, but... Just saying. Wait, did that enemy not drop a gem? Oh, he did. It's just, for some reason... Isn't being picked up. Nice. Sparks, you could only pick it up when I was literally touching it myself. Oh, my lord. The game's gonna give me a brain aneurysm at some point in its time frame. Okay, that one gave me the gem right away and didn't hit me, so that's good. I'm not a fan of these, uh, underwater bases, though. In this game, they're not very convenient. One thing I like about the other Spar games is they're not too big on the water levels, but after playing Hero's Tale, you just realize how little they actually emphasize the whole water levels. Also, why is there a gold gem on top of the water? Also, why is there a rock cave with a dragonfly behind it? I have so many questions to ask here. Wait. Oh, he's not actually hurting me. He's just... I think I was just charging into the wall. I like, look at all these gems. Can I, like, break this by chance? No. I cannot break that. Now with my meaty little head. Doop -de -doo. Oh, hello Mr. T- Yeah, see, I'm like 100% sure that enemies only drop red gems in this game for whatever silly reason. No clue why. They just do. I keep hearing that dragonfly. There's gotta be a cannon around here somewhere, right? Wait, is this guy switch literally just right in front of him? Like, oh yeah, Spyro will never see that coming. Oh, we might as well break it. There's lots to do in this level. Holy cow. I guess we've only been recording five, five minutes. I did all that mini games, or that 
dragonfly stuff, so it feels like I've been recording longer when I wasn't even recording yet. Hmm. Anything? Get me out of here! Um, that's it. Hello, the gate's open. No, huh? it is. Oh well, what do you know? Look at that, silly me. Thanks for saving me. Oh, that was the dragonfly. Dill. Hey, it's Dill. All right, that still doesn't help the fact that we need to figure out how to get into that rock area down there. So we'll go this way first. Hey, second. Oh, wait. Hang on, we got him. Good. Hey, it's Scuttlebutt. Who the frick names a dragonfly Scuttlebutt? Hi, guys. My name's Scuttlebutt. Wow, your parents must have loved you. Oh, yeah, man, they did. They, they definitely did for calling me Scuttlebutt. That's a good name, right? Are these 10s or 25s? Oh, that one was a 25. That one was also a 25. Or, in this case, a 52, if you look at it. I'm pretty sure that's actually right where you need it too. Wow, such good game design that the cannon is just immediately pointed where I need it to go. Oh, and there's just a dragonfly in here just waltzing around. Play-Doh. Hey, Play Alright, so we just got a bunch of the uh, Greek philosopher guys going on in here. And we get Sparks. Literally, out of all these names, ours is named Sparks. No shade on Sparks, but come on, what kind of name is Sparks compared to, like, the other ones, you know? Except for Scuttlebutt. Scuttlebutt's the worst name so far. Even Homer was, you know, still a legitimate name. Just, like, how come some get to be named, like, Socrates and all that, and then other ones get to be named Scuttlebutt and Sparks and Homer? Oh, well, looks like we can go down here now and... Cheeky torch me some, uh... <gasps> That enemy dropped a green gem. What? What is that nonsense? A green gem? Crazy. And then he just did a face plant. Oh, joyous, joyous me. I was pro I was good thinking about recording like four episodes of the or five episodes of this or something for no, I need four episodes of this for the uh the week, but I think I'm gonna have to play a different game. Like, this game, while decently good, it's still game-breakingly painful. Like, it's... It is so remotely flawed that any redeeming factors this game has are thrown out the window. Like I said, Monkey Monastery, hands down, the best level in this game. It's the most polished. I almost feel like they started with that level and then did the other ones. Because a lot of games, you can definitely see where the production quality went downhill. Like, especially when, um, you know... Wait. I'm still missing things underwater? Oh my god, this level's gonna be big, isn't it? It's hard to tell, like, where you've been in this level, because there's so much to it. Also, it's waterfalls. This game does not like waterfalls. See, I'm pretty sure I've been down that way, right? Oh yeah, because I went one way expecting it to be like a dead end or just a mini game or something, and turns out it wasn't. Oh my god, so many gems around here. What are these like gems that the enemies drop like bounce so far? There we go, you're dead and your gem's probably gonna go bounce to the moon for all I know. Got ourselves another one of these chunguses. Oh, I hear another one. Like their sound effects are so dumb. They're um, they use the sound effect of a Spyro 3 enemy that was underwater. But at the same time, it's just they, they make it say it a lot more, which just makes it annoying. All right, I think we finished the water. We need to get up there somehow, though. Uh, it looks like we can go to these ladders over here. Though I do think we're only missing the. Wait, what? I think we're only missing the mini-game, uh, dragonflies. Hello, sir. Are you gonna drop a green gem? 
Okay, maybe big enemies drop green gems and small enemies drop red gems. I don't know. Alright, let's go up to the waterfall area. Oh, Mr. Tiki, let me guess red gem from you because you can be headbutted. I'm beginning to really think that's how it is. Oh, wait, there's a dragonfly over here. Some dragonflies move really slow. It's funny how we decided which ones, you know, go turbo speed and which ones go to speed of smell, but okay, it's fine. Wait. Guys, that gem just fell into the ground. What am I going to do now? Daisy. If I'm missing one gem... Oh my god. If I'm missing one gem, I'm gonna cry. Oh, I know, I'm missing uh, 14. Uh, I don't know if that's any better or worse, though. Also, how come sometimes when I press start, it closes the entire menu, and other times it leaves it partially open? Like, I just don't understand the whole menu thing in this. It's, it's really weird. This game, man, this game is just weird in general. I don't know what to think about it. Also, you'll never find a dragonfly underwater because you can't breathe underwater. I'm kind of defeating the whole purpose of the game even having water sections because, like, what's the point of a water section if it's essentially useless? You know, like. I think the issue with these water sections here is if you let the camera move too much, it screws you over. Okay, we've already been to that spot. I don't know where we're missing gems, though, because we're missing 14, which isn't anything huge. But at the same time, it's not like it's just one gem lying around somewhere. It's at least three gems. At least. Oh, this is the wheels of the cannon over there. They're green for whatever reason. I don't know if I missed that gem up here, though. It doesn't look like I did. Okay, I didn't think I missed it, but it was just so slow to pick up that I couldn't tell. There's just so much to this level that it's just obnoxious to try and find everything. Okay, and we did go over here and grab everything. Okay, I didn't, wasn't sure if I did that or not. That was the switch. I gotta get off my foot. Cut the circulation off on it by uh, leaning into it this entire time while I'm recording. And yeah, trust me, that starting to hurt. Okay, maybe there's something underwater. And like I said, there is a way to track gems in this game. But to actually unlock that, you do have to beat the entire game. Like the final boss and everything. By that point, there's really no reason to go back and 100% anything because there's no skill points, there's no rewards, there's no unlockables. Man, considering Spyro 2 and 3 actually had stuff they could unlock just by playing the game, uh, just screams how much better of a game those were than this game. I feel like there was supposed to be a lot more content to this. Well, there was supposed to be a lot more content. It's not. I feel like there was, but I feel like there was going to be more content than this game initially released with, even after cutting content. I feel like they had to cut even more, if you know what I mean. Like, it feels like they cut so much content, it's not even funny. I'm scared that's all gonna be underwater, man. Oh, wait, this is this section. I know it's for, I know for a fact that the gems aren't under there. I have been back to that place about half a dozen times. I know 150% that there are no gems back there. So my eyes are blurring as if I've been staying up all day. I've only been recording for like maybe an hour. And it's just... Ugh. And that's the cannon up there again, right? Oh my lord, this is um... Not going very well for us, huh? Maybe the gems are up there somewhere. I guess only one way to check, right? Never mind, I thought this level was actually a lot bigger than it really is. This level is actually pretty small. 
It feels big because there's just so much going on at one given time, but... Wait, never mind, this isn't the cannon. I thought this was the cannon part. Huh. Weird. I, I w it would help if the music wasn't so cheerful when it's such an annoying level, though, you know? Wait, are there two of these, like, underwater path sections? Or did the cannon just despawn? Is this game more buggy than I remember it being? It could be. That could just straight up be the case. Can I break these pearls for some gems? Oh yeah, hey, man, here's some gems. Mm, yeah, there's some more gems. There's all 14 of the gems you need right there, buddy. Instead, they're giving me nothing. This game, man. Like, look how, like, barren a lot of this is. This is... blah. Alright, so we're gonna go back up there and see if we missed anything, because I swear we've been to every part of this level a multitude of times, and if I... if I find out that one of the gems that we're missing is the one that fell through the ground, I'll be... I'll be livid, man. That is just... That is like the biggest troll middle finger that a game could ever give you. It's just like, oh yeah, you know about that? No. No, no, no. Wait, there was a gem there. It was invisible. Oh no, there's invisible gems now. That's concerning for me. That's still 12 gems though. Can I actually move this cannon? I actually can't even move the cannon. Hmm. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. I love this game so much. Definitely a flawless 10 out of 10 game right here, man. Definitely, definitely, definitely. Yeah, blah, blah, blah. What the heck was that? It just, like, shot me across. I always thought there was more gems back this way, though, than there were. I don't want to go up here, game. You cannot force me to. I guess what I'll do is I'll just end the episode and go and find the gems. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and I will see you guys all next time. Bye-bye, join the Patreon, Discord, and link below. Peace.